Hello everyone, welcome to the another session in immune system. So far we have discussed about type 1 and type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, its various mechanisms in detail. Today we are going to discuss immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction also called as type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Here an antigen antibody interaction will lead to the formation of an antigen antibody complex which will finally deposit at the tissue trigger inflammation cause tissue damage each word is important in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction there is only a mere antigen antibody interaction which triggers inflammation there is no necrotizing lesions here the antigen antibody complexes will combine and finally it get what circulated in the uh, circulation and finally it get deposited in the vessel walls fine yes remember remember usually this may be of different mechanism like in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction i told you it may be due to obstinization antibody mediated or due to complement mediated here also we have some different types one the immune complexes may be formed somewhere it get deposited elsewhere okay number one number one formed somewhere and deposited elsewhere number two in situ deposition in situ deposition where they are formed, there only they will deposit. Where they are formed, there only they will deposit. Okay, we will be seeing the examples. We will be seeing the examples soon. Okay, so we have in situ immune complex deposition also. Okay, yes. And remember, this immune complex mediated diseases are usually systemic. That means they will involve more than one body system. For example, kidney like glomerulonephritis, joints, arthritis, blood vessels, vasculitis, all these are systemic conditions. So type 3 hypersensitivity reaction mainly they involve systemic condition. Okay, let us see, let us see what is the mechanism. There is a systemic immune complex disease which is observed in patients who got a foreign serum. You know serum from the immunized host we use for protection against diphtheria so in earlier times now we are not using that in earlier times the patient will develop a condition called the serum sickness which is a systemic immune complex uh, disease in which what the antigen from the host and the antibody from our body will interact leads to a formation of an immune complex which get deposited in the blood vessels walls and tissues causing inflammation what is the pathogenesis of systemic immune complex disease? Whenever they give you what is systemic immune complex disease, remember it is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 1, they will tell us allergy or immediate hypersensitivity reaction. Type 2, antibody mediated. Type 3, immune complex, systemic immune complex disease. And type 4 is what we call it as cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Okay? Yes. First, there will be formation of an immune complex. Then there will be deposition of this immune complex. The mechanism of all this deposition is not that much well understood. But what they are telling, each of this antigen, 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 antibody complex has some what? Uh, uh, preferability towards some tissues. For example, for example, um, like they will most, uh, mostly they will have very high chances to deposit in areas with high pressure like urine, synovial fluid, in glomerulus, in joints. So they have some what? special partiality towards some tissue that means they will tend to first deposit in those tissues only so you can see here we have an antigen in the circulation okay and antigen antibody complexes will be formed finally they will get deposited in the endothelium okay this is the endothelium this is the endothelium okay and finally this will activate the complement finally platelet aggregation okay then vasculitis all those stuffs they will happen okay that is they are going to trigger the inflammation okay just to remember the three steps number one formation of immune complex number two deposition of immune complex and number three inflammation and tissue injury inflammation and tissue injury remember remember 
in during this phase the patient will present with symptoms like urticaria joint pain lymph node enlargement proteinuria why i am telling like joint pain proteinuria i told you, you know they will always tend to occur at the, uh, the deposited areas which are having some high pressure like in case of synovial fluid in urium glomerulus okay all those that is why I am, the patient is having such clinical manifestations mostly okay yes and remember remember i told you i told you that there will be complement action of the complement since this complement which is normally present in the circulation is recruited i am using the word recruited is recruited for what triggering the inflammation it is recruited for binding with the antigen antibody complex for triggering the inflammation and tissue injury the c3 the c3 is the main complement what is the complement c3 is the main complement which will be recruited the level of c3 during the initial phases of this systemic immune complex diseases will be very low in the body fluid this is a very very important mcq question very very important mcq question what is it that is in which of the following hypersensitive reaction there will be decreased in serum levels of uh, c3 the answer is nothing else but what we call as type 3 hypersensitive reaction then okay fine now let us see now let us see what is the morphology how the tissues will occur remember remember i will always tell type 3 hypersensitivity reaction type 3 hypersensitive reaction means fibrinoid necrosis I hope you know what is fibrinoid necrosis. It is one of the morphological pattern of necrosis in which due to antigen antibody uh, complex deposition, it will invert what it will trigger inflammation in the vessel walls. Okay, I am writing that here again in the vessel walls and this vessel walls finally leads to platelet aggregation, platelet aggregation, smooth muscle proliferation, smooth muscle proliferation smooth muscle proliferation okay platelet aggregation smooth muscle uh, proliferation and activation of macrophages all this together forms what we call it as fibrin which is deposited deposited in vessel walls deposited in vessel walls deposited in vessel walls i hope things are clear for you i hope things are clear for you fine fibrin and they are deposited in vessel walls type 3 hypersensitive reaction fibrin or necrosis vessel walls platelet aggregation smooth muscle proliferation activation all this called as fibrin and this fibrin as you can see here uh, i have showed in the chapter cell injury you can see a pinkish deposit in histopath okay fibrin fibrin is seen as it is appreciated as a pink or pinkish red deposition in histopath in histopath okay i hope this point is clear for you yes okay that is the important morphology you can see smudgy eosinophilic area of tissue destruction that is called fibrinoid necrosis we have we have lot and lot of conditions will give you fibrinoid necrosis i have already told you some of the examples Number one is polyarthritis nodosa. Number two is rheumatic heart disease. Number three is vasculitis. Vasculitis. Number four is glomerulonephritis. 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 Let us see some other examples. Okay, some other examples. This is the latest update in Robin's 10th edition. Robin's 10th edition. This is the latest update. Number one is systemic lupus erythematosus. This is a condition which is a uh, which we will be seeing in detail. Remember, what are the antigens involved in case of systemic lupus erythematosus? Here, the antibodies are produced against the nuclear antigens. Nuclear antigens that means these are the antigens which are present in the nucleus. Okay, we have a lot of histones antigen, chromosomal antigens. Okay, uh, non-histone antigens. Everything we will see. And here the complex will be finally deposited causing nephritis, skin lesions and arthritis. Remember systemic lupus erythematosus as the name indicates it is a systemic disease. It will affect many systems. Okay. There will be CVS symptoms, CNS symptoms, okay, GI symptoms. Okay. The patient will have mucus ulcer, after ulcer, malar rash, everything. We have something called as PSGN, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The streptococcal here, the streptococcal uh, antibodies are formed against the streptococcal cell wall antigen. I told you that, I told you that in rheumatic fever, the antigens will be produced against streptococcal M antigen. M antigen. 
M antigen. And I told you that M antigen is similar to that of the myocardium antigen. So when the antibody is going to attack this streptococcal M antigen, it will it attack its own myocardium, which will result in rheumatic heart fever myocarditis. And here in post streptococcal glomerular nephritis, the streptococcal cell wall antigen mimics the antigen which is present in the glomerular basement membrane. So whenever the body produces antibody against the streptococcal cell wall antigen, this antibody is going to damage our own basement membrane, especially glomerular basement membrane. And the patient will present with nephritis. And remember a very important case based question, case scenario based question, typical of post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. How the patient with the PSGN will present? The patient will present with compliance of oliguria or burning micturition, burning micturition, oliguria, burning micturition. And next is very, very important, cola colored urine. Whenever you hear this terminology in kidney, it is a standard essay question for your prop exam, PSGN. Okay, yeah, uh, normally a young male presenting with oliguria burning nutrition and cola colored urine, you should always, you should always, it is a nephritic syndrome. We have nephritic and nephrotic syndrome. This is a nephritic syndrome, post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. The patient will have a history of rheumatic fever. The patient will have a history of fever and and sore throat and later after some two to three years the patient will complain with symptoms of nephritic syndrome and the patient will present with the cola colored urine passing cola colored urine you should whenever you heard the word cola colored urine please 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 it is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis you should there is no confusion okay the, they won't give any big uh, clinical case scenario it will be a single line but the cola colored urine will help you to identify that it is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis then we have polyarthritis nodosa. In polyarthritis nodosa, here, see, actually, here the antibodies are produced against the hepatitis B virus antigen and it may cause a systemic vasculitis. Reactive arthritis, again, acute arthritis, serum sickness, I told you already, arthritis, vasculitis, nephritis, and arthritis reaction against various uh, foreign proteins and cutaneous vasculitis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These six examples you should know. The six examples you should know examples of immune complex mediated diseases examples of immune complex mediated diseases okay i am draw i am drawing a box that much important okay very very important box once this is done we are moving towards the last type of hypersensitive reaction called as t-cell mediated hypersensitive reaction Remember the T cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction. We have two types of T cells. One is CD4 plus helper T cells, and another one is called CD8 plus T cells. CD4 plus hyper, uh, uh, T cell will produce one set of uh, hypersensitivity reaction, and the CD8, no, it will produce some another uh, set of hypersensitivity reaction. But the mechanism of both these type of hypersensitivity reaction is almost the same, except in the uh, the way how they are going to kill, how they are going to target the antigen. First, let us see the CD4 plus T cell mediated inflammation. Remember, this T CD4 plus T cell mediated hypersensitive reaction, the cytokines which are produced by the T cells will induce inflammation. Okay, and remember, this is also called as DTH or delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. Why? Because it is called as delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. Because suppose I am administering any antigen to your body. If it is, if you are allergic, if you are allergic, you will immediately produce the symptom. That is what we call it as immediate hypersensitive reaction. But at the same time, if the symptoms appears between some 24 to 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, it is an example of delayed type of hypersensitive. That is why the term delayed. It is also called a cell mediated hypersensitive reaction. Why cell mediated? Because CD4 plus 4 plus and 8 plus uh, T cells are coming into action here. Fine. Yes. And remember the main uh, what the important lymphocytes which comes into play are T helper 1 cells and T helper 17 cells. Remember T helper 1 cells no, they mainly causes activation of macrophages whereas T helper 17 cells it will mainly trigger the activation of neutrophils. I am writing these two points again because it is important. T helper 1 cells and T helper 17 cells. T helper 1 cells macrophages macrophages T helper 17 cells neutrophils neutrophils okay i hope these things are clear for you okay now let us see now let us see how how cd4 plus t cells are, are going to so the mechanism is very simple children mechanism is very simple just to know the salient features already we have told the cd4 t plus t cells it will detect the antigen it will present okay the apc will present the antigen to the cd4 plus t cells it will produce cytokines inflammation tissue injury normal okay tissue injury okay yes this is the normal story normal story but the questions, the questions they are going to ask is from this box.
okay from this para they are going to ask the question okay first question first question what are the cells i told you it is t helper 1 cells and t helper 17 cells just know the key point just to know the key point t helper 1 or t helper 17 cells come into action then second question what they okay um yes okay fine and the second question second question which interleukin is going to stimulate the proliferation of t helper 1 cell and which interleukin is going to stimulate the formation of t helper 17 cells remember interleukin 12 okay interleukin 12 stimulate the formation of t helper 1 cells okay and this in, uh, t helper 1 cells i have already told you they cause macrophage activation by interferon gamma production similarly similarly we have interleukin 23 which will activate t helper 17 of course there is uh, the known mnemonic zendal won't work here you have to simply uh, but mug up mug it up interleukin 12 interleukin 12 interleukin 12 will activate t helper 1 cells t helper 1 cells produce interferon gamma macrophage macrophages similarly interleukin 23 will activate what we call it as t helper 17 cells this will cause neutrophil activation neutrophils activation fine yes okay so that is the mechanism so this is how cd4 plus t cells do next how the cd8 plus t cells cd8 plus t cells no they will directly they will directly kill the tissue cells cd8 plus t cells they will directly kill the t cells no i'm writing here no cytokines no cytokines because cd8 plus t cells have something called as perforins granzymes already discussed perforins granzymes this perforins and granzymes are responsible for drilling they will drill a hole in the membrane leakage of enzymes the cell will die the cell will die okay before going into the examples let us see some of the clinical features of this type 4 hypersensitivity reaction first let us see the clinical features of cd4 plus t cell mediated inflammatory reaction remember cd4 plus t cells we have t helper 1 t helper 17 these two cells are going to produce some cytokines which is going to finally cause tissue injury the classical example for cd4 plus t cell mediated reaction is tuberculin reaction i told you that when we inject the antigen a foreign uh, body or foreign antigen remember the reaction is going to happen only 24 to 48 hour, hours after that is why it is called delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction you studied you will study in microbiology we have something what we call tuberculin test tuberculin test was earlier used for the diagnosis and all purposes diagnostic purposes of mycobacterium tuberculosis tuberculosis infection it has lot of advantages and disadvantages that you read in microbiology remember in tuberculin infection we have something called as purified protein derivative which is a foreign antigen okay which has tuberculous bacillus coated in it and this tuberculous bacillus containing protein which will be injected into the patient okay it is actually what all these are intracutaneous or we call this intradermal injection one in uh, suppose if the patient is already sensitized in a previously sensitized individual the induration or reddening the point at which we are uh, injecting no okay there will be some uh, reddening and induration which appears in some 8 to 12 hours and reach a peak in 24 to 72 hours this is actually a classical example of delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction you know whenever we heard the word tuberculosis the important one thing which comes into our mind is nothing else but granulomatous information so in cd4 plus t cell mediated inflammatory reaction or type of hypersensitivity reaction the characteristic histopathological finding is nothing else but what we call it as granuloma already we have discussed the structure of granuloma in detail it has nothing else but epithelioid cells epithelioid cells are nothing else but modified activated macrophages there will be clumping of epithelioid cells there will be loss of uh, common cell membrane there is something what called as multinucleated giant cell this multinucleated giant cells epithelial cells will be further countered by a collar of lymphocytes and fibroblasts the whole structure we call it as granuloma fine yes 
Remember, in granuloma formation, especially in tuberculosis, it is the T helper 1 cells which causes interferon gamma. Why I told interferon gamma and T helper 1 cells? Because you know, granuloma will be formed as a result of classical macrophage activation. For the classical macrophage, because it is the macrophages which has to form the giant cell epithelial macrophages and the giant cells. So, T helper 1 cell is the culprit. T helper 1 cells will finally produce interferon gamma. Can you tell, just now I have told you what is the interleukin which will stimulate the proliferation of interleukin. Sorry, T helper 1 cell. T helper 1 means interleukin 12. T helper 17 means interleukin 23 that will produce neutrophils okay yes okay so that is the first type okay yes you can see here you can see here there will be okay what i'm going to round here i'm going to round here is nothing else but the clumping okay okay we, they call it as cuffing of mononuclear inflammatory cells okay and this is the ihc okay i will tell what is ihc ihc later i will tell you okay ihc that is cd4 and the CD4, what is IHC? I will tell you. Okay, immunohistochemistry. Okay, that is a different topic. I will uh, soon make a video on uh, what is IHC. Okay, what is the use of IHC in pathology? I remember, IHC is very. Uh, what it's now it has become one of the gold standard investigation for many for diagnosing many conditions, tumors, hematological conditions, everything. We will discuss that soon. Okay, this is an IHC. Okay, which is a uh, which uh, the infiltrates are positive for CD4, CD4 antibodies. Once that is done, once that is done, the second example is contact dermatitis. Here comes a question. Atopic dermatitis. Whenever you heard the word atopic means previous sensitization allergy. Atopic means allergy. It is a type of type 1 hypersensitive reaction. Atopic dermatitis is type 1 hypersensitive reaction whereas contact dermatitis, it is an example of type 4 hypersensitive reaction. That means when you come in contact with poison IV, poison oak, there will be itchy vesicular blistering dermatitis which will occur some 24 to 48 hours after. That delay, that is responsible, that it is because of that we call it as a delay type of hypersensitivity reaction. And remember most of the drug allergies, most of the drug allergies are even what? Yes, most of the drug allergies are even uh, what we call it as our type 4 hypersensitive reaction. Let us see some of the examples. Okay, now let us see some of the examples. Remember, remember, out of this complete table, I am going to draw this table. Okay, very important, VVIP. Okay, this is a VVIP table. Okay, one second. Yes, this is a VVIP table. Okay, so here all examples all these con uh, conditions except except type 1 diabetes all are all are cd4 plus that is they are mediated by a t helper 17 and t helper 1 t helper 1 t helper 17 t helper 1 t helper 17 fine yes what are the rheumatoid arthritis multiple sclerosis ibd inflammatory bowel disease we have crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis psoriasis and contact sensitivity we call it as contact dermatitis all these are cd4 plus mediated all these are cd4 plus mediated out of that out of that one important protein one some important points in rheumatoid arthritis the antigens are produced against collagen or citrullinated self proteins why they have given question mark it's controversy they believe that okay the antigens are supposed to formed against this okay not at well established multiple sclerosis remember multiple sclerosis it is actually a demyelinating condition it is a demyelinating condition in which the antibodies will be produced against the myelin sheath of the peripheral nerves and as a result of that what will happen the uh, the patient will present with muscle weakness everything that is multiple sclerosis okay paralysis Okay, and optic neuritis and inflammatory bowel disease against the okay we have a lot of pathogenesis for IBD. i'm not going to tell that now then finally psoriasis and uh, contact dermatitis i have told you i'm repeating again contact dermatitis type 4 atopic dermatitis type 1 fine and finally the patient will have what skin rashes blisters and all okay yes once this is done once this is done once this is done we have cd8 plus t cell mediated cytotoxicity here, cytotoxic T cells, they will directly, via class 1 MSC, they will directly kill no cytokines, no cytokines produced. The one and only classical example of CD8, CD8 type of hypersensitive reaction is type 1 diabetes. I told you type 1 diabetes is type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 2 diabetes is nothing else but type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, here it is a T cell mediated inflammation causing destruction of islet cell by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. You know the patient will finally have insulitis that is inflammation of the beta cells. 
violets of langer hall and in type 1 diabetes you know what is the problem the insulin will not be able to produce whereas in type 2 it is insulin resistance okay in type 1 there will be insulitis this you will see in endocrinology insulitis is a characteristic what histopathological finding in pancreas in case because of uh, inflammation of the beta cells insulitis is a characteristic histopathological finding in type 1 diabetes mellitus so that finishes that finishes the different hypersensitivity reaction at last at last i will ask you to remember four tables number one table number one table anaphylaxis bronchial asthma allergic rhinitis food allergy examples of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction second table second table i have explained this in detail it's a vvip table opsonization complement antibody mediated miscellaneous please go through these examples you can't skip this you can't go to the pathology prof exam without learning the hypersensitivity reaction one question must in micro also okay for my prof exam type 1 hypersensitivity reaction what's my microbiology essay question then this is type 3 sle psgn psgn cola colored urine pan polyarthritis nodes the reactive arthritis serum sickness all this systemic disease may, may, okay it will mainly affect the various system cvs okay joints high pressure areas everything okay fibrinoid necrosis is the morphology fibrinoid necrosis is the morphology once that is done we have something what we call it as finally type 4 cd4 plus cd8 plus all are exams of cd4 plus except cd8 plus cd8 plus only one exam type 1 diabetes mellitus insulitis is a characteristic histopathological finding inflammation of the beta cells of violets of palangans okay yes with this we have completed type 4 hypersensitivity reaction thank you fine okay